Hey there, Jeremiah here, thrilled to welcome you to The Throw Zone, where I teach you all about the juggling arts. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to throw doubles consistently. It's one of the most essential juggling tricks, whether you wanna be in the flow juggling style or approaching club juggling from a more technical, traditional standpoint. Doubles are just essential, and we're gonna approach it from two different angles. There's an isolated approach where you build up one club at a time. And then there's the integrated approach where you connect it to an existing pattern. In this case, we'll use singles and then build up to throwing doubles. All right, first things first, we're gonna start with the isolated approach where we just work with one club and we get used to throwing a double flip. So your first exercise is to throw a double at twice the height of the single, back and forth from hand to hand. Let's talk about the mechanics for a second. You have your wrist, which provides flick and the speed of rotation. If you're gonna do low doubles, you're gonna use a lot of wrist to do so. When you're throwing higher doubles like this, you're gonna need to use more of your shoulder and your elbow, and you'll use a little bit of a swing to launch that club higher. I find myself using very little flick to get the desired double. And this is the kind of thing that you get used to as you spend more time practicing it. Give yourself a target at first. You want that club to rotate just enough that you catch it at a slightly downward angle so that it leads into the swing for the next throw. If it's over rotated and you catch it here, then you have to make a correction before you throw the next one. And try and get it so that as you do catch it, you go straight into that swing. Don't just stop and then create a new action. Use the momentum from the existing catch to help you get started on the next one. You should be able to do this a good 10 times in a row before moving on to the next step. Drops are gonna happen. Don't worry about it, try and learn from them. Try and notice every time you drop if the club was too rotated, under rotated, not high enough, and make the necessary adjustments to the next throw so that you do it better. The second exercise in the isolated approach is of course to take a second club and try and get two doubles, one followed by the next. I'm still gonna use the swing of my arms, right, left, and that can really help you in the beginning. Right, left, double, double. And of course, switch sides, left, right, double, double, right, left, double, double. As you get more comfortable with this, try to begin snaking the clubs back and forth. What I mean by that is try and get it so that the clubs feel like they're following each other. See how green is in the lead, giving me a gap where I could snap or clap against my leg. That's where the third club's gonna go in the pattern. But I'd only expect you to start to do this after you've taken the time practicing each side individually with a pause. Right, left, pause, left, right, pause. Then you just make that pause less and less. Right, left, left, right. So that I can start the next side before the second club even lands. This snaking technique is what's really gonna help you get to three. And once again, it's really important to set yourself a goal. Try and get it 10 times in a row before you move on. Of course, the third exercise in the isolated technique will be to use all three clubs and go for doubles. Remember to use the shoulder to initiate the action. This is where your power is gonna come from. If you're trying to flick it, then you're gonna end up with over-rotated throws. Learning doubles in an isolated fashion is all well and good, but there's one big problem with it. It's not connected to any of your other patterns. 
So now we're gonna go through the integrated approach where you use a base pattern. In this case, we'll be using the cascade and we'll be starting to throw doubles from the cascade. And we'll learn several patterns along the way that you never would touch learning the isolated way. A simple way to think about and remember the steps with the integrated approach is you've got three clubs and so you've got three unique throws. At first, you're gonna start with just one out of those three entering the pattern. Then you're gonna start with one half of the pattern. So just your right side, so every other throw. So right, right, right. Then you're gonna work up a little more to two thirds of the pattern. So you're gonna do two out of three, continuous. So that their one club out is actually doing the bass pattern. And finally, you'll build up to three out of three. So you've got one third, one half, two thirds, and then three out of three. With some other little steps, in there that you can use to help get you to each of those milestones. So before you start working with the integrated approach, you always wanna use the isolated approach for the one club. Making sure that you know how to throw the desired throw. In this case, we're working with doubles. So make sure that you start there, because if you can't throw a double with just one club, there's no way you're gonna be able to throw it in pattern while you're doing the cascade. So you've gotta start with the isolated approach. Ultimately, using both of them is extremely effective. When you find yourself coming up against a roadblock as you're learning it in the integrated approach, it can be really useful to step back and use the isolated approach to refine some of what you're working on. As you settle into your cascade, do a quick posture check. Make sure that your uh, feet are spaced relatively even apart, your knees are slightly bent, and also check the posture of your cascade itself. Is it relaxed? Are your arms basically at your sides, your elbows relaxed, your shoulders back, and your cascade should be centered right around your solar plexus. You don't wanna find yourself juggling your cascade up here and then expect to throw doubles out of a cascade that's not in a good place. Having good posture with your body and your cascade is going to make learning all the tricks easier. At first, you wanna just throw it out of the pattern get back into the cascade and find your balance again. And there's gonna be a pause in the pattern while that club's in the air. So you're gonna have to learn to adapt to that pause and not just keep throwing the clubs. That's gonna mess up your rhythm. And when you first throw your double, chances are it's gonna be short. And that's okay, it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. Learn it from both sides. You might find yourself having to reach for one of the catches. You really want to resist having to do that very often. If you find yourself constantly stepping in order to make the catch, glue your feet to the ground. <laughs> make sure that they are not moving and instead change the throw. Make sure that the throw goes where you want it to go. Don't adapt to the throw. You're the one in control. You tell that club where it is going. And once you can throw just one at any time that you desire, start to establish a rhythm with it. One of the first most straightforward rhythms is to just follow one club back and forth. So I'm gonna use the orange club in this case and throw it for the double. And as soon as I catch it, throw it for the next double. Step number two in the integrated approach is isolating each side for those doubles. So rather than throwing right, then left, back and forth, now we're going to throw just from one side. Double, 
double, double. Now at first, you won't be able to do it consistently, so start with just two in a row. Right, right, back to the cascade. Right, right, back to the cascade. Notice there's still that little pause. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Make sure to work the other side. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Always being sensitive to the change in rhythm. Right? I only throw the next throw once I actually need to. Try switching back and forth after a few throws. One, two, three, four, five. Now to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Counting your throws and your successes is pretty essential to making clear progress. Now we're gonna go for two out of the three clubs being thrown as a double, back to back. Right, left, back to the cascade. Right, left, back to the cascade. Work each side individually for a period of time and set yourself a milestone, maybe five, 10 in a row, whatever feels good to you. Uh, and then switch sides, left, right, back to the cascade. So I'm starting with my right hand, following with my left, and then starting with my left hand and following with my right. It tends to be the case that the first throw is usually done pretty automatically. And we end up focusing way too much on that first throw. If you find yourself doing something like this, or something like this, try and focus more of your attention on the second throw and making sure that it's good, because chances are your first throw will be thrown pretty automatically. It ends up being a, something of a game of where you direct your attention. Your attention doesn't have to be directed where it automatically is. You can shift it to the point that you actually need it to be. In the process, resist the urge to throw the doubles too soon after one another. You still wanna wait a good bit before you throw the next throw. You don't wanna flash them, it's called, and clear your hands of doubles too fast. That'll be useful later, but it'll make it harder to create a good rhythm with the two-thirds pattern. If you find yourself having trouble with this one, this is a great time to step back and return to the isolated approach. Right, left, pause. Remember, if you can't throw two doubles back to back, isolated, why would you think you can do it in pattern? Once you've got it so that you can throw two back-to-back -back doubles from each side and return to your cascade, now it's time to start snaking them. So that there's one club that's not part of the double regime. Looks like this. It develops a lot of resilience in your pattern to be able to do so. It creates an interesting rhythm. So right, left, Single, left, right, single, right, left, single, left, right, single, right, left, single, left, right, single. Another useful thing to experiment with in achieving this third milestone is to use the one out of two or the half shower on both sides to enter the two thirds. And by that, I mean run it on one side and then switch directly to running it on the other side. And when you do so, you sort of fool yourself into immediately doing a two out of three for just a moment. And then you can decrease the period or the amount of throws between uh, switching sides. So I'll go right, 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 left, 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 right, 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 left, left, 
left. Now trying to just do it with the, uh, two throws before switching, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, and then eventually just one. So we'll start by running it on the right side, and then right, left, single, left, right, single, right, left, single, left, right, single. So basically it just becomes a quick switch from doing a half shower on one side to doing a half shower on the other side with a decreased period. Remember in the process of trying to snake them while doing the cascade, set a target for yourself. Don't try to do it endlessly. Try and do three or four snakes in a row and return to the cascade. Always using the cascade as your base pattern and in the process, getting better at your cascade and establishing it as that base pattern. Not only is this drill great for learning your doubles, but it's also good for starting to split your mind and being able to do two different things back to back. This is gonna be an essential skill for more complex patterns down the road. When you feel like you're ready to start throwing all three into pattern, once again, don't just try and run it. It's great if you can, but part of the goal is to be able to integrate it into the cascade. So one, two, three, back to the cascade. Left, right, left, back to the cascade. Set yourself a goal for the number of doubles and then practice returning back to the cascade. Building up the amount that you can do over time. Always returning to the cascade. An interesting little exercise to try once you've got your doubles down is to start to adjust the height of them, making the spin faster or slower but always still throwing a double. Another thing to try is adjusting the dwell time or the amount of time that the club's in the hand. So notice I'm gonna continue throwing the same height, but I'm gonna do it sooner. As soon as I catch it, I go for the next throw. This is a decreased dwell time or increase the dwell time and hold on to it for as long as possible. Flashing the doubles. A flash is basically unloading all of the clubs and having a moment where they're all in the air. And so at first you might start with just flashing two, right, left, getting them out of your hand as quickly as possible so that there's an extended break before you throw that single and return to the cascade. Practice flashing from both sides. Then to make the leap to the full flash, you're just gonna throw all three of them quickly. Get them all out of your hands. There should be a moment where your hands are empty. Can you squeeze in a clap even? Right now I'm leading with my right hand. If you really wanna get good at it, Lead with both hands, because then you can flash back to back. This is a great drill for learning five clubs. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I really hope you've enjoyed this class about learning doubles. They are one of the most useful tricks. I use them all the time in flow juggling patterns. I use them all the time when I'm warming up my club juggling 
It just helps me get into the groove, changing the speed, making sure that I am on point. If you want to support the channel, make sure to check out the Patreon. Lots of goodies over there. And uh, make sure to subscribe. If you really want to know when the next video comes out, hit that notification bell and uh, do tell your friends. Thanks for being here. Take care out there.